The Morning Garden Show is talking about. Oh, okay. The Morning Garden Show is talking a little bit about the, the little uh, gardening tool we just bought two, three days ago. It's amazing. All it is is a, a temperature gun. See? Temperature gun. Ah, uh, hello, hello. I uh, said. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I, I've just, you know, been shopping for the garden. Just got little items like this to tell the temperature of the soil. Um, and that's going to help me out in the hot days, find out why they're not growing. Or if they're growing great, I can log what temperature the soil is. Um, also, when I do my seedlings, uh, if, if I have water, then I'm going to add to them. I like to have my water at least around uh 60 70 degrees uh you can actually take temperature of the water before you add it to your plants and know that it's not too cold or too hot and also i got this today that this is a company and i look i'm not i'm not throwing anything out to this company but you've seen them before johnny what was that johnny johnny seeds johnny select seeds and i'm just looking through it and they got a lot of new items in here so i just called excuse me on the internet and said send me a Send me a um, a catalog. First time dealing with the, uh, this company, and I will be using a lot of compost tea this year. Uh, let's see, share, share, use out. Oh, you shared me out on your community post. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I see some of the things you do on your channel pretty interesting. How do you make the people pop up? <laughs> you know, when you uh, when you mention their name, you might say, "Hey, the morning garden show." Uh, a little small picture of them pop up. That's interesting. I think that's interesting. Uh, but um, got my little bags here. These are nothing but paint bag strainers, and I'm gonna use those to strain out my uh, cow manure and also my compost so i'll do a two-part uh a, a, a combination of two items compost and cow manure inside of a 40 gallon um uh receptacle and fill it up with rain water and allow it to steep and then use that for my uh gardening and it's going to help out immensely it's going to help out immensely. I can't wait to get started, even though I am months away from gardening anything outside. I uh, looked outside today. And it's going to drop down into about 21 degrees uh, within the next uh, few days from now. And also, um, the, uh, the fact that it is now getting cold. Uh, my, my collard greens of kale are still outside, and, and they still look great. You know, but we'll see what happens when the temperature starts to really plummet here in Zone Seven B, Maryland. Yeah, but um, I'm looking good. I'm feeling good. Well, a couple days ago, I kind of pulled the old back muscle, picking up a a shampoo with one hand. What was I thinking? And uh, and then I felt the pain the next day, and I said, okay, can't go to work today, and. So I stayed in today. I stayed off work today. I stayed off because I said I, I I went there the first day I got hurt and it was really painful working. And I hung in there and you know it was very difficult to do little things like walk and that sort of thing. So now I'm feeling much better. And I bought something called a back support. That helped out some. It did help out immensely. Absolutely. And I won't have to buy any fertilizer this year. That's a good thing. 
I like to find the sales when they really are deep, uh, deep uh, markdowns because it's just it's just a great thing if it's deeply marked down. I bought seven bags that were valued at um, some of them were seven and eight dollar bags. They were uh, they were marked down to uh, like a dollar ninety five cent. Can't turn that up, folks. I just can't turn that up. And that was at Home Depot. Now, in the next few days, I'm going to look at Home Depot because they're the ones that usually will start marking down items uh, for the garden season. And then another thing, right after Christmas, the day after Christmas, you can try places like uh, Lowe's and also um, Lowe's and also Home uh, Lowe's and also Walmart. Excuse me. And you go there, and they'll have seeds already up and on the shelf. But look around for the uh, seeds because they have the 50 cent seeds and also the, um, uh, you said 20, 20, 20 cent seeds. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm not going to hold my breath for that, but I know they had a 50 cent seed. Um, fresh seeds, they just put them out there for you to try some of their, uh, their different items. Uh, so I will hit them for some of those. I have plenty of watermelon seeds. I won't buy none of the watermelon seeds. Um, and this book here, like I showed you here, is Johnny Selected Seed. Johnny Select Seed. They have peppers in here that are new varieties. And I just may tr try some of these. I might just try some of these. What are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts, any ideas, any, any comments at all? is interesting and they show these beautiful pictures i mean you know this stuff they say your stuff gonna look just like this if you just buy our seed and that's absolutely not true you gotta know what you're doing absolutely have to know what you're doing information and then they have like Swiss chard up there and you got tomatoes they got that up there I think you can see that yeah now the prices on these babies are expensive the seeds are marked up they have a marked up like they lost a diamond ring when he was making this stuff and they uh hello hello how you doing backyard garden backyard garden i looked at your your, your uh uh about two days ago i was looking at your channel and oh hey hey how you doing how you doing and i saw that uh you had some very good ideas you you were sitting at a table talking about uh things about saving money and also uh you know about uh, the benefits of, of having a garden and i thought it was quite, quite interesting and here we have watermelon now i didn't see anything here that i was interested in only because uh yeah go ahead and get the catalog it's, it's completely free to send it to your house within about a few days and it, it won't hurt anything you just have it in your collection so you can look through it and then if you see something you like, you write down the names and see if you can find it better priced somewhere else. Um, because they might have the same seeds at Walmart or they might have them at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Or you might, well, it's risky, but sometimes I go on eBay and I look for seeds. But that's risky because the people you're buying them from, you have no, no clue who they are. And if they got a bunch of seeds from three years back, they want to get rid of. Yeah, they're gonna sell. I said, "Welcome to the line." I said, "Welcome." Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, seasons greetings for uh, okay, fellow Earthlings. Fellow Earthlings, hello. How you doing there? Uh, food for external culture. Um, we're just talking about seeds, and that's one of one of the things we're talking about. I don't like to lock into one subject because sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll do this 
what we're talking. Because uh, you might come in and, and have some ideas on how to save money on fertilizer. I don't want to hold someone away from a conversation because it might be five people in here that really need that conversation. Uh, my thing is, um, I did the chop and drop this year. I'm like a, a, a I'm like a lot of gardeners now. Uh, my whole point issue is just feeding the soil. I don't care a hundred percent about plants. I care about putting that food in the soil early enough in the year, the beginning of, of fall, and uh, when when the fall comes in, that's what I want to do. I want to hit that uh, that uh, that that situation where the, all the food is just sitting there. It's it's been put in the soil all the way through winter and everything and the soil will be much better when the spring comes my soil now from clay that i uh, always tell the story i always tell the story it, it's uh was like clay uh 20 years ago now it's like cottage cheese it's it's soft it's, it's fluffy um and that came from adding weed weeds to the soil oh my goodness just chopping them off and leaving them and underneath my trees I got some what I call junk trees. I call them junk trees. Yes, I do. I call them junk trees because I, I don't do anything with them. They just grow and grow and grow. And they're around my fencing of my property. So I cut these things down and I put them around the base of my uh, fruit trees. And they turn into a beautiful, beautiful black uh, uh, compost underneath the trees. And that's what I do. And does it look pretty? Sometimes, no. Because I don't, I'm not all that neat with, oh, I'll make it look pretty. I don't do that. I'm not good at that. Uh, I could be good at it, but I choose not to. So I put all this wood and everything underneath the trees. And then I see my trees do one thing. Thank green organic love. Green organic love. Hello, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Morning, gardener. And I'm chat. All right. I'm, I'm just loving everything that's going on here. Usually this channel, it, it, folks, I'm an honest person. This channel is not very popular. It's just not. I don't know what it is. I don't have that pizzazz or whatever. <laughs> but uh, but I love it because there are people out there who do like my channel. They 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 like my channel. I got a hit. Uh, was I think it was yesterday. A person just dialed in just to say I love your channel. Um, I appreciate what you do. And I was like, oh, I said okay, okay. I said, I appreciate that. And it let me know to just keep on going because I, I couldn't, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I go past channels that got eight and, and like almost like four and 500 people on there. And, and the guy, uh, sometimes it's a wife and husband, a wife and husband, yeah. And then, you know, and then they'll, they'll be sitting here, yeah, you know, I think that, uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, I'll get back to sleep on this. But he has a good channel because he uh, has a lot of good information. My, my channel is this, soil. Saving your seeds is a plus. You're right about that. Um, and I get on this sometimes, and sometimes I ask questions like, uh, I was kind of puzzled. Do you want to save seeds from, um, from what they call, um, not heirlooms, uh, the opposite of heirlooms, I can't think of right, hybrids. Do you want to save seeds from hybrids? No, not necessarily because they're not, true to the parent plant sometimes when they grow back but sometimes they get um uh tampered with through the pollinators that send the, the pollen from different plants to that plant and it becomes part of that plant so um you know all i want to do all i want to do is see here's my thinking right if i could be an influence and see people with big beautiful gardens huge watermelons Lots and lots of tomatoes that they don't know what to do with them other than give them to the church. Um, lots of green beans, eating fresh food. People getting on here saying, you know, I used to run to the doctor a lot. And, you know, and I, I don't, I feel better now. I, I feel much better now. That's, that's, that's what I want to inspire. Um, so if I could be part of that conversation, that's all. Because we got some great, a lot of these people I'm looking at on here. Uh, there's a lot of great people on here. I mean, I'm not going to go through naming everyone because I'll forget someone and someone will get teed off. But I want to say there's some gardeners right in this room right now that can get you to where you need to go if you're not there already. 
But this is Johnny Telexi. All these new varieties. And what really got me was the bell peppers. Because um, when your garden starts growing low productivity, when it's just low, like you might have a pepper plant, all it produced was two, and you had it out there all season long, you got to ask yourself, what is going on with this? What is going on here? Why is this uh, garden only producing small plants? Plants that don't produce a lot. They just produce like, like I said, about one or two, maybe three uh, peppers. And they've been out there for months. They've been out there. And, and, it, and they have not really producing anything. You can have a number of things could be going on. But how do you narrow it down? And we should talk about this sometime. How do you narrow it down as to what in the heck is going on with my garden? I've done everything I can think of. I've fertilized. I've watered. Why is my garden producing a small plant that doesn't produce much? Well, a lot of it could have to do with you could have tired, tired soil. And that comes from planting every year in the same spot. Every year, every year, every year, every year. Uh, in those same spots. And it loses a lot of nutrients that a lot of us don't put back in there. And you have to put it back in there. It's, it's like um, a bank account. You have a checking account. It has $500 in it. You go money and you take out 300 and you buy something. Something you've always wanted to play with. Some kind of toy or a cell phone. And you go back in there and you take another $100 out. Now, your bank account is still there. But it's not $500 there. It is now down to $100. Now, what's going on? What's going to happen to you? So nothing magically is going to happen unless you say, okay, I need to put back in $400 in this account. And when you put the $400 back in the account, the account will start behaving as it should. And it used to be people thought, well, I've used this soil a lot, so I'm going to I'm going to go buy some soil and put on, and put in my garden. Uh, uh, I'm going to buy some soil. I'm guilty of that myself. I wanted to buy some soil, and then I read some information that really kind of schooled me. Is that you don't know where these guys uh, get this this soil from? Uh, yes, yes. I look at. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I did. I, I actually, because I wanted that, that garden that when I first started gardening here, when I, 20 years ago, huge cucumbers, huge uh, uh, tomatoes. And then year two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it started going downhill. I said, what's going on? I'm doing exactly what I did the first year. Well, that was the problem. The soil was depleting because at that time, I wasn't adding anything into it. I was using... Uh, something called Miracle Grow, um, uh, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, yeah, I think I said that right. And it was just getting worse. So I started asking around. And you know, keep in mind, folks, I'm a new gardener. I'm trying to learn this. I'm trying to somebody to come along and guide me in the right direction. And it wasn't happening. Because when I go to Lowe's, they would say, get that bag of stuff over there. And I looked at the price, I said, damn, that's $6 a bag. And I have a good sized garden. All right, what else do I need? You tell me, well, you need this. And you need that. You need this. And so I looked at it to three, four, five hundred dollars. So I go get the stuff, put it down, and we get two peppers and three tomatoes and two cucumbers. And I said, wait a minute. Did I just pay close to four hundred and some odd dollars for, for uh, uh, half a bag of groceries? Not even half a bag of groceries. Yes, I did. Because I've listened to people whose job it was was to make money when you purchase uh, from these stores. And their job was to sell that stuff. And I didn't see that really. I thought the guy was trying to help me. He said, oh, yeah, I use it every year. Yeah, that's real good. Oh, that's good stuff there. That, well, just, how, many, how, how big is your garden? I said, well, I didn't ever measure it. He said, oh, just get a, get a few bags and see where you're at. Okay, anyway. Then came along, I started looking at the forest when I was going fishing. 
And I kept looking at it, and I see it in the fall, and I see it in the summer and spring. I fish there a lot. Even in the winter, I'm going to go there. And I would look at it, and I look at the leaves fall. I see them change color, and I kept looking at the pile of leaves, seeing the deer run through the leaves. And I'm saying, look at all those leaves. Where did those leaves go? And I started getting curious. I said, all right, let me find out. So I Googled it. And it said, leaves deteriorate and go to the ground. And they recycle uh, back through the trees, and they do this every year. And I said, so wait a minute, if I understand correctly, nature feeds its own soil? There's no one down there watering it. There's no one down there fertilizing it. There's nobody down there taking pH samples and all of this. Nobody down there um, sending off samples to a lab. Wait a minute, something's wrong here. I'm doing this backwards. And then I looked at uh, when is it that this takes place? And I looked at it. It takes place in the fall. All through winter. Okay. Now the snow lays on top. Hey, hey, you could just said, hey, hello. I guess that means everyone. Hello, how you doing? Good to see you. But the the problem I was having was understanding this because the books were saying one thing. They were saying fertilize in the spring. It's fertilized in the spring. And that was wrong. It was just wrong because how can you, when Mother Nature's doing it in the fall and all through winter, it's feeding the soil. And then some through the, through the uh, spring and summer, because the feeding doesn't stop uh, of the biology in the soil feeding on the, uh, the, the, uh, the bio uh, mass in, in the soil. It doesn't stop feeding on it. It's just that during the time uh, when you are looking at uh, this, this soil being fed, you got to understand that this has been going on for millions of years. And so Mother Nature's got it right. It's man that's doing it backwards. So I started feeding my soil in the winter. Really wanted to just give up, but started feeding in the winter, putting huge piles of leaves on my soil. And then I got it wrong you know the first time i did the leaves i was tilling them in just tilling them in got them down about eight inches but really it was like uh three feet of i don't know it, was like, it seemed like three feet of uh material i brought in all the way around but when it went down some i started tilling it in in the spring and then nothing grew that year and i said what happened well uh the thing about it was that the nitrogen was gone from the soil that all plants needed. The nitrogen was gone because it was used up when, it, when uh, it had to break down all those leaves. It was gone. So I was told by a gentleman, don't even try to grow nothing this year. If you till some leaves in there, just wait till next year. And, and I said, okay, another year lost. So there it was all summer long, nothing grew there. Very few weeds, but it was a lot of leaves in the soil. Remember, I said it was three feet tall, and then it went down to about uh, eight or nine inches, and I tilled them in. Um, and I remember uh, Paul was saying that, you know, you don't want to till anything in. And I remembered that. So when I got a, a two truckloads of uh, wood chips that took me almost two months to bring to the, the area where I was use them at. I said, never again will I do that because it was just way too much work. Um, and I said, well, what do I do? And one day I looked at my weeds and there was the answer. You have enough weeds here in this yard to feed this ground. And that's what happened. And after that, I was set. I, I bought me a really good, <clears throat> after I stopped joking around with the, um, the cheap, Trimmers. Hello, honeybee. She says hello. I don't know. She said hello too, but probably to everyone. But uh, the the thing about it is, I just felt like I'd get a good trimmer and be done with it. I got that, and it, it will it will chop down anything. It'll chop down. I'd be careful even around my trees. So I cut down everything. Cut down everything. Got heavy line on it and everything. I'm cutting everything down. It hits the ground. I leave it there vines and everything cut to the ground and it lays there 
Come back in a few weeks, months, it's gone. What happened? Biology of the soil, uh, put it back in the soil. And it grows some more, come up. And I said, so get on the schedule and start cutting this stuff down. And I kept doing that and kept doing that until my soil got much better. Where I was taking my hand and reaching into my soil. I never could do that before. I could reach in up to my knuckles with just soft soil. And I said, put your whole hand in there. And I said, oh my goodness, what's going on? And I realized it was the weeds that were doing it. And all the night, all the worms, I don't know if it, I don't think they're all night crawlers, but I have lots of worms in my yard. And the only thing I regret sometimes is that when I move any soil in any direction, I run into a whole bunch of worms. Whole bunch of worms. And I don't like, and that's why I'm glad that I use the manure fork, because it doesn't kill a lot of worms. It, it, it'll it have them move. Uh, when you lift the soil up, you see them go back down. You, you just see them go down. They weren't killed. The uh, I have so many worms that what they do, folks, this is amazing to me. They will lay in the grass. When you walk into the yard, you'll see them run off. Worms. They're not in the ground anymore. They're just laying on the grass, right on the surface. And I'm looking, saying, look at all these worms. They're everywhere. Uh, so, needless to say, I don't buy worms when I go fishing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't buy them. But the worms are an indication of the fact that you have enough food in this soil for them to survive. And they're there for that reason. Also, um, because of the weeds that are on my, on my property, I have the praying mantis on the property now. They moved in and they uh, stick their little nests on all the trees. And I see them in the spring. It's like a green variety from, uh, I think they're from China. And they are everywhere and they are welcomed in on my property. They're welcomed on my property. And now when I grow stuff uh, or items that I grow, they're sweet. They're beautifully colored. Um, oh my God, I, I don't want to sound brag, uh, braggy, but uh, I grew some apples this year that was just really, really sweet. And the grocery store can't touch them, so I don't want no more grocery store apples. I don't want any grocery store apples for any reason. You know, I don't want them. So I don't till anymore. I don't till. All I use is a uh, manure fork. And when I use a manure fork, I use it just to lift the soil up, lift the soil up, go back, and just keep backing up and lifting it up, lifting it up. And that allows air to get into the soil. It loosens the soil. And then I put my plant in or... I will put my seeds in. Beautiful deal. This is the farm. Welcome to live stream. Hi, this is the farm. Welcome to live stream. Oh, thank you. She welcomed a uh, gentleman or person to live stream here. That is really nice of her to do that. She don't have to do it, but she do it. She says, "Give a thumbs up to the to the host." And I got eight thumbs up. I really do appreciate that, folks. It, it, it gives me uh, more, you know, you really want to do something when, when you see that people appreciate it. But like I said earlier, I'm going to do this show regardless. I'm going to do it because uh, it's, just a, it's just a good deal just to do this show and see if anyone you can help. And, and I like it when I go to other people's uh, channel. I'll see some of, some of my work in their videos. I'll see it. And I'll look and say, I recognize that. Because right now, the uh, there's not a lot of people using manure for to, 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 to put in the soil and, and lift it, put in the soil, lift it, put in the soil, bring it back uh, two to three inches, lift it, two to three inches, lift it, two to three inches, lift it. And what will happen uh, when you loosen that soil up and put your plants in, uh, if, if, if most manure forks that I use are about uh, eight inches across and about uh, eight inches deep. And what happens is that uh, you do eight inches and then you do right next to it eight inches. That's 16 inches across, eight inches deep. It loosens the soil up. It allows for uh, your plants 
to have a beautiful and easy time building their root system. Uh, because you need uh, roots underneath those plants. I mean, you need serious root system to see serious roots, on, I mean, see plant up top. It's not going to work the other way. You just have no, uh, uh, you know, no room for them roots to, to open up and, and do what they need to do if you don't have uh, that soil loose enough. And sometimes, depending on the clay soil, it can be so heavy and so dense that roots have a difficult time moving out into uh, the soil to, to feed. And you don't want to have it. You don't want to have it uh, tight like that. You want the, you want those plants to uh, be able to move out with ease, and that's why you need and want and should love loose soil. Loose soil. And when I say making that compost, I tell everybody: don't throw your leaves away in the fall. Don't throw them away. Put them in a pile. If, if you got a, a couple of um, uh, what you call them things, uh, pallets, nail them together or, or string them together with some uh, that zip tie, and then start stacking up your leaves, uh, leaf mold in there, and you got something you're working with. If you, if your money get real tight, you you say, uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not going. If you, even if you say, I'm not buying eight and nine dollar bags of fertilizer. I'm going to use this compost. You'll be just as good, if not better, than a guy buying uh, chicken uh, waste from a farm. You're you're hundred percent right. Good soil is the key, and everybody's job in here should be growing great soil. I'm just I'm you know it's just a fact. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. Growing great soil. Loose, healthy soil. Absolutely. That's the key to go. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's been a pleasure uh, here. I'm only going there for a building. Well, it's the same to you. I appreciate you stopping in. Please remember to go homeless as a cold. So, okay. Okay. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes we can, we can be kind of forgetful, but yeah, definitely, definitely take care. And um, keep growing that uh, soil path. And I like also what you put here. Uh, um, you said loose, healthy soil. If we had that going on, loose, healthy soil, we'd be set. We'd be set. Food forest from culture. Uh, I'm going to pray. I'm going to stay on the yeah, it would be nice if they could. It would be nice. Because we're getting ready to get down this week, and this is all the way up here in Maryland. We're getting ready to get up to about, uh, well, getting down, excuse me, getting down to 23 degrees. Uh, that's going to be Thursday and Friday, you know, that's what's going to happen. Happy holiday. Look at that. They say happy holiday to Food Fathers Permaculture. That's what I'm talking about. These people know and know the man, and he's good people. I need to. I say I need to make more by bio chart. Uh, I, said, I need to make or buy bio chart. I don't have nothing against bio chart. I've seen people go crazy over it and, and say, "Well, if you get the bio chart, that's it. You're all set." Um, I just know that biochar, when you put it in your soil, it's in there. Uh, I use a little bit of, um, it's called um, uh, ashes from my uh, pellet stove. And I sometimes get that by 40, 50 pound bags. And so I have a more than enough. I used to actually take the whole bag, uh, some of it, 30 pounds of it, that's I use what I want. And I would throw it away because it, it, I just have, don't have room for it in the house. You know, big, big bags of it. Now, keep in mind, biochar, uh, wood ash is not for everybody because everybody got different soil. And, and you know, you got to be careful when you start putting stuff in your soil. 
got to know that, that, okay, this is because this type of soil it needs this kind of uh, uh, amendment, you know. John's soil might be different from my soil. Uh, uh, green organic love soil might be different from both of their soils. Most of us have clay soil. Not all, but most do have clay soil. Yep. So I love it. I love it when I go into the garden and, and I look at my soil and see that it's black instead of that uh, that brown it used to be, that brown. I knew something was wrong and I said, what what, what is going on here? How can I make this soil uh, better? And, you know, you could do it a couple of ways, but the best way is to keep piling on the organic material. And that's it. Now, there you go right there, uh, uh, price, just said. When you get it pretty, when you get your soil pretty, I'm going to use the term pretty. When you get your soil pretty, you got to stay after it. You, you can't just load it up with organic matter and just say, all right, it's done. You got to stay on that soil. And the cheapest way is if you got uh, lots of weeds in your yard, use those suckers if you got um leaves use those suckers all that stuff is absolutely free oh that's nice i did that one time making care packages for them and it, and it gives you a really incredible feeling but one thing I didn't understand, and, and then a young lady helped me understand, they didn't always take uh, stuff from us. They didn't know who we were or anything. And uh, the young ladies in the poll, you got to understand, they don't trust everybody. You know, they, they're fighting for survival, and they don't know what you're giving them. And I said, okay, I said, I understand. I understand. This is damn. This has been a good session. Um, uh, long time, and it's because sometimes I have you know people they come in the room, they don't say anything. And that's okay, but uh, it's a lot easier just to say hello and then say anything. Um, I grew peas this year. Okay, and that's conversation right there. You can build that into a conversation. So, what kind of peas were they? Uh, what kind of soil do you have? Uh, what kind of water did you water with? You know, it makes it makes your conversation. But these new varieties of plants that they're growing. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got, we have one of my favorites, and I don't know why, other than just the taste of it, corn. I like corn. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they show you things that you could use to make biochar. And biochar, as I think it's like partially burnt wood. It, it's almost, because one thing um, uh, a pellet stove does, it turns, Morning God, it can you explain how biochar uh, does? Uh, biochar basically stores um, the, uh, the nutrients that your plant needs. And it's like a sponge. It holds on to it. And... Um, it, it uh, people make it with with wood, but uh, it's not wood that's completely burned uh, all the way to like a, like a pellet stove. Where a pellet stove would turn wood into powder, into absolute powder, um, and a fireplace would turn uh, wood into little flakes that would be burned all the way, you know, like um, burned all the way like light paper. 
but biochar has weight to it because all it is is, is, is wood that's really charred to the point where it's crunchy when you when you uh ball it up in your hands and it leaves black tar on your hands like a like a black powder hard to come off but biochar stores uh nutrients is what it does and let's see where are we here Hope that answers the question. 34. I'm looking for. Look at this right here. Beautiful. Illustrations. Of, I think you can see that. That's coin. And I love this because uh, my favorite coin is. Uh, I would love to grow kiwi. I just don't have the room for another trellis. Okay, I can understand that because kiwi uh, is a good size plant. I have two kiwi plants. One is getting ready to grow. I put it in there last year. Uh, what I what I get it for? I think I got it for. I want to say a dollar. I got it for a dollar because at the end of the year. When they had the kiwi up there, the only reason why I bought it because it was a dollar. It was one dollar, and I bought it. Uh, have you decided on the two trees that you're going to plant? Do you decide on where you're going to buy them? Yeah, you 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 uh you got a plant that needs a mate. That's what you got. If you went to Home Depot or Lowe's or one of them and bought that kiwi plant, the only thing about them is they don't know what you, you know they don't know anything about that plant. I have bought a plant from them, went to the code on the side of the box, and tried to find a mate for this plant. It just said kiwi plant. Male require, female require. It didn't tell you was that a male I had or a female. It just said hardy kiwi plant. So uh, if you had it for three years, they usually start producing the second year. But um, yeah, you, you need a you need a mate probably. I don't know what kind you have. You probably got a hardy kiwi or something like that. But uh, you got one variety that produces, I think it's called Isaiah, a uh, kiwi. It doesn't need a, um, it doesn't need a, a male or female. It produces on its own. Doesn't produce a lot on its own, but it produces on its own. Um, but it produces more, of course, if you have uh, a mate for it. I need to find one uh, deal. Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm lost here. What do you mean? I need to find one dollar deal. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I guess you're talking about buying something somewhere for a dollar. I said that's what uh, the Kiwi line could let's see, line. Let's see, like grapevine. Mm -hmm. Yep, they grow like grapevines. You put them on either a heavy, strong fence. Or you put them on uh, some kind of structure you build that'll hold up to 200 pounds. And uh, if you got the right plants, you let them cover that, and you got kiwi everywhere when they produce. They produce all at one time, so you gotta have some way to get rid of that, or make lots of wine out of it, or preservatives, or like that. I have no mail and one wine. I got you. I got you. Now, all you would need to do is find out what kind of female you have and then try to find the correct male for that. And then you're all set. And as soon as she gets old enough and she starts producing blossoms, uh, then the insects will come in and cross those two and you're all set. Or you could go in there with a, a Q-tip and cross them yourself. And that's how that works. Kiwi is exciting. You know why? 
folk because they wanted the healthiest food you can possibly put in your mouth. And it tastes incredible. And disease doesn't bother them too much. I hear Uh, on average, about two, two and a half years, depending on the variety. Uh, the one I have started producing uh, about its second year. About its second year, start producing. That was uh, Isaiah Kiwi, which is, uh, like I said earlier, male or female. Um, but they are, they are nicknamed uh, King Kong, divine. It's named King Kong because some of the varieties will get huge. They have been known to cover 150 feet of tree. I mean, excuse me, of a, of a tree, yeah, to actually cover it, trying to kill it so that they can take over that area. Hello, everyone, everyone. We got Busy Bee Garden and Homestead. Good to see you again. It's amazing. All these people coming in this room. I've done this a long time since I've seen this many people in here. Hello, Angela. You're a special lady. Um, we have we talked about this earlier. No, no temperature thing here. I just like to, you know, because I'm gonna use the heck out of this. It says my body temperature is 93.6. I feel good. <laughs> I'm just having fun, folks. Um, so we got that going on. We got the catalog I'll be working on tonight and marking some stuff out of this. Um, it's amazing. I don't have to buy anything from this thing because I always find a deal. I always find a deal. I go hit them stores like Walmart had these. Um, let me show you something here. They have these trays, those plastic trays. Um, Man, they um these trays, you've seen trays like these, you know, you've seen these trays. And these trays, they want six, almost seven dollars for these trays. I bought them all for 50 cents each. Walmart had them up there one day, but I messed up. I tried to come back. Oh my goodness! This, this, I would go on uh, YouTube and find it. Um, you, you got um, a lot of different things you can use for pets, uh, but I haven't used them in such a long time that I don't want to give you out a recipe that that might fail. Um, but I use natural things, and um, the uh, I have so much. Uh, I mean, they don't. My stuff don't get eaten. It, 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 the bugs don't bother any of my plants, my, my tomatoes or a corn or uh, uh, peppers. They, they don't bother them. Uh, what's the other thing called? Um, yellow squash. They don't bother them, my plants. If you grow healthy plants, the bugs won't eat them. And if you have something else in the yard for them to eat, like a couple of weeds sitting off on the side, they will eat the weeds. They'd much rather have the weeds. And I know because when I look, I see the crickets and I see the, the grasshoppers in the weeds. Now, I don't see them on my plant. And then right behind them is the praying mantis. That's how that works. But if you wanted uh, a recipe, some people use uh, hot peppers made into a spray. Some people use uh, garlic and... Um, uh, God, what's that? Garlic and, and a little bit of, uh, of um, what they call it? This is like a soap, like a dishwasher soap, but they use original where there's no uh, antiseptics in it and that sort of thing. And people spray their plants with that stuff. Or they use uh, neem oils or they use, uh, um, what's the other one called? Uh, I can't think of it right now. I can't think of it right at this moment. Uh, so, oh, you. you
Yep. So always think of something. If you can make it yourself, make it. Because don't run off to the store and buy this stuff. There ain't nothing but people that work at a company that's making it up and they sell it to you and put the colorful labels on it. And you go, oh, this stuff looks like it's going to work. And, you know, like that. Um, I give an example. Um, I get 100% neem oil. Because if you go to um, like Lowe's, they'll sell an abstract uh, of, uh, of a neem oil. It's like a it's just something that they took out of the neem oil and you're getting what's left over. It, it, it's supposed to work even though they do that, but I want I want the whole thing. I'm well getting colder now. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm here in zone seven B. Is anyone else in zone seven B? Anyone at all? Zone zone seven B. Right here in Maryland. And I have uh, 25 trees on my property. I uh, got them uh, put together in close density planting. Uh, some of the trees are 21 inches apart. They're what they call um, dwarf trees. Oh, okay, we got 7A, seven, 7A, seven, okay. Uh, and the, the thing about it is the trees produce. And my heaviest producing uh, 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 trees are the uh, peaches. And that's why I like peaches. I mean, you get peaches. I mean, peaches are hard to care for because every, they soft and everything wants to put a hole in them and try to eat them. But um, mm, so good. Yeah, peaches, uh, apples. I just started getting some apples because the trees were real young last year. Uh, so I've had them for about two and a half, going on three years, some of them. And it's hot in this house, man. I mean, mm, let me cut this uh, this furnace down. Let me see what the temperature is in here. Okay. Temperature in my house is it is warm in here. Set for sixty five. The room is uh, ah. So now I see that. Um, I see that I don't need to turn it down. It's, it's 66 degrees in here, uh, but it's still kind of warm. For me, I, I you know, it's kind of warm. Oh, that's another little toy I bought. Operating your furnace from uh, your cell phone. It's just really exciting when you first get it. I saved a lot of money on um, hooking it up myself. It was real easy to hook up. 9B. Oh, California. California. Yeah. It doesn't get real cold there, in my understanding. Is. And you can grow things like oranges and stuff, and I can't grow oranges here. Oranges. So only thing we could we could grow oranges, but we gotta we gotta come outside and bring them in and you know back and forth and all that. I don't want to do that. Cause that tree's that tree's gonna I'm gonna forget to leave it out there one day, and it's gonna be gone. So I don't want to do that. So I'm doing better, folks. My back is starting to hurt a little bit because I've been sitting here a little for a while. And, you know, because I hurt my back lifting up a uh, shampoo. I had no idea them things were uh, that heavy. That's why I snatched it up with one hand. And then the next day, I, my back said, ah, 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 ah. 
<laughs> so I'm okay. I'm okay now. But um, I think I'll go and, and just lie down for a couple minutes and get myself together. But folks, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you for being in, supporting me, and keeping this channel up there. Because I, I thought uh, <laughs> I thought that okay, yeah, laugh out loud. Um, it's just that it, it, it's a it's a garden show with facts. I don't do a lot of entertaining, and sometimes I do, and you know. But all in all, we're all trying to grow a big, beautiful garden so that we can feed ourselves uh, healthier foods, and that gives you more options when you can actually uh, grow your own food. You know that that's a plus. And if you look at how much you actually spend on food a year, a year, and depending on the size of your family, that's a lot of money. And that's why the grocery stores do not want you growing food, and the government don't want you growing your own food, and your state doesn't want you growing your own food. So they want you to depend on the grocery stores to keep them viable. All right, folks, this has been the Morning Garden Show. Thank you very much, and have a good day and a good holiday, and remember, keep on growing.